Hey guys, welcome to my video on nephretic syndrome. I'm going to start out by encouraging you to please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon for instant notifications of future uploads. So recall uh, what I discussed in my previous video of the general differences between nephritic and nephrotic syndromes. So when nephritic syndrome, we're talking about a specific inflammatory damage that's severe enough in the glomerulus to manifest as hematuria, and oftentimes you have hematuria in addition to proteinuria. In nephritic syndromes, the glomerulus is specifically attacked and damaged by antibodies and or inflammatory cells. So nephritic is specific and contrast this with the deposition of mostly preformed junk in glomeruli in the nephrotic syndrome. Of note is the fact that immunofluorescence is extremely useful in the diagnosis of nephritic syndromes because you need to visualize the presence of the specific provoking or attacking substances to make your diagnosis. Nephritic is specific and get a grip. And why I'm saying that is GRIP is my acronym for the main nephritides. And I've actually added wire as like a side part of it to complete the set. And I want to actually uh, say beforehand that the R part of my acronym, Rapidly Progressive Glomerulonephritis, is actually an overarching umbrella descriptor. And any nephritic syndrome or even damage to the glomeruli can become a rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. So G is good pastures aka anti-GBM disease. R is rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. I is IgA nephropathy and P is post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Wire is for the wire looping of capillaries as seen in severe renal SLE. Now uh, SLE causes uh, a, nephro a nephrotic syndrome in the initial stages, but if it's severe, it can progress to a nef nephritic syndrome. And I'll go over SLE renal lesions in a separate video on SLE. So when we talk about IgA nephropathy, I call it inviting a nephropathy. Because what IgA nephropathy is, is an Ig antibody complexes that form in response to an infection are big and bulky. When the glomerulus tries to filter it, it can't. And there's there's scarring that occurs. The Ig antibody antigen complexes start to deposit in the mesangium, and inflammatory cells are recruited to the site and exacerbate the damage to the glomerulus. I used to get very confused when I would study IgA nephropathy because in the descriptor it says deposits in the mesangium and that sounds a lot like a nephrotic syndrome but because it is because this process is inviting inflammatory cells and that's damaging the glomerulus it's actually a nephritic syndrome. The Differential diagnosis for an upper respiratory tract infection symptoms plus hematuria without any hemoptysis. So you only have hematuria with upper respiratory tract symptoms in your vignette. The differential diagnosis is IgA or PSGN, and PSGN is post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. So the way that I remember, if I'm reading a vignette and I'm presented with this clinical presentation, how I know it's one or the other is if there's the patient is an adult, the likely diagnosis is IgA. But also, A is for a company. So IgA nephropathy and IgA nephropathy, the hematuria, the onset of the hematuria occurs close thereafter the upper respiratory tract infection symptoms. So there's usually only a couple of days difference and sometimes it can happen at the same time just about. 
Another thing of note is that hemlock shellen purpura is associated with IgA nephropathy, and in fact, the glomerular lesions of this are indistinguishable from IgA nephropathy. The only thing is that hemlock shellen purpura would have the purpuric lesions, the hematuria, and likely GI tract symptoms. So you may not have upper respiratory tract symptoms in hemlock shell purpura, but you'll definitely have some kind of GI tract symptoms. In terms of post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, as I mentioned before, it's also a combination of upper respiratory tract symptoms and hematuria. However, there is a greater duration of time between the upper respiratory tract symptoms and the onset of hematuria. In fact, I came up with this expression to help me remember the main hallmarks of this disease. C3 weeks ago, I had a sore throat. So C3 is C3 nephritic factor, and that's really it's really important to remember that C3 is weak in PSGN. It's low in PSGN. I had a sore throat, so ASO is anti-streptolysin O. And in PSGN, it's going to be elevated. PSGN is usually in children, so P is for pediatric. P is also for periorbital edema, which is a common clinical finding in PSGN. For good pastures disease, good pastures disease is a commonly tested disease. And it's actually now, I believe, called anti-GBM disease. So what happens is... There's a type 2 hypersensitivity of antibodies against type 4 collagen. And you have that characteristic uh, linear immunofluorescent staining in the glomerular basement membrane. But the really interesting thing about good pastures is the clinical presentation. So you have basically hemoptysis and hematuria. The hemoptysis is due to pulmonary hemorrhage. Now, when you read in textbooks, there is another disease that sounds a lot like good pastures, and it's called Wegener's granulatosis. I believe it's now called granulatosis of polyangitis. And on paper, they kind of look the same. Upper respiratory tract bleeding and hematuria. However, I think of Wegener's as Wegener's disease because in Wegener's disease, it will more oftentimes present with nasal abnormalities and nosebleeds and the classic saddle nose deformity. So the bleeding is going to be more nasal pharyngeal. And now that I've talked about good pastures and Wegener's, this is a great segue into RPGN. So rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. Now, I want to start off by saying that when I was studying these, it was really hard for me because I used to think like, well, is this a separate disease? Why is it listed as if it's a separate disease? So I want to say, start off by saying that any glomerular lesion, if severe enough, can cause this. Hence, this is like an umbrella diagnostic descriptor. And I think it really should be called really punctured glomerulonephritis. So RPGN occurs when the glomeruli has been damaged so much that holes form and inflammatory cells such as plasma and fibrin pour in. And so they pour in and they form crescents. And so this happens in, in extreme situations when you have severe uh, diseases. So you may have a mild disease that's untreated or you may have a disease that was already severe and just progresses to this kind of quickly. RPGN can be classified by cause because remember I said pretty much any glomerular damage or lesion or disease can cause this. So anti-GBM, so anti-GBM type RPGN is caused, can only be caused by one disease and that's anti-GBM disease aka good pasture. So if good pastures is severe enough and oftentimes it is you're gonna have the presentation in your kidney of RPGN. The second type is immune complex type RPGN. 
So remember I mentioned earlier that IgA nephropathy is caused by immune complex deposition uh, because the glomerulus cannot filter it. So if that is severe enough, and it rarely is, it rarely happens with IgA nephropathy, but if it does, uh, and if it's severe enough to have those punctures in the glomerulus and the inflammatory cells pouring in, you will have an immune complex RPGN. And lastly, posse immune RPGN is uh, caused mainly by ANCA positive vasculitides. The small and medium vascul vasculitides, such as Wegener's, as well as microscopic polyangitis and Churg straws. So all three of these are ANCA positive. And of course, as I mentioned before, IgA is implicated in immune complex RPGN, and SLE can be implicated in it as well. Now it's review time. So I'm going to ask, if you are TI, if you have a patient with an upper respiratory tract infection, with no bloody expectorant mentioned, but the patient has blood in his urine, what's the likely diagnosis? So the answer is, if it's an adult, it's likely IgA, and if it's a child, it's PSGN. And in addition, as I mentioned before, you will also look at the time difference. So if a time, a week's a three-week or two-week difference is mentioned that supports the diagnosis of PSGN. If you have bleeding in the upper respiratory tract and hematuria, what is the likely diagnosis? So if the patient is coughing up blood, you think good pastures disease or anti-GBM disease. If the patient has a bloody nose and a deformed nose, you think Wegener's granulomatosis which is also called granulomatosis with polyangitis. And of course, any of these diseases can cause rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. So I hope you liked this video and you've reached the end. I just want to thank you for watching. Uh, please support me by subscribing and click the bell icon for instant notification of future uploads.